QuickBooks Online 2023 PayPal Bank Feeds Import Data to QuickBooks. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser to open the sample company. You can open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser incognito window typing into the search engine quickbooks online test drive we're using the sample company to compare the accounting view the one the bank feeds practice file is in and the business view the one the sample company is in you can compare and contrast the two views with the cog drop down and switch the view down below we're going to be duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time right click in the tab up top to duplicate it right click in the tab up top once again to duplicate it back to the tab to the middle and reports on the left opening up the balance sheet the balance sheet yes the balance sheet and then if you look at the business view by the way the reports are located in the business overview and then the reports that's where they're at over there Let's go to the tab to the right and then also down to the reports, open up the other financial report, the income statement or profit and loss or P&L, whatever you want to call it. Let's change that range. I'm going from 02, 01, 02, no, 01, 01, 22, tab 123122, and then run it to refresh it and then tab to the middle, close the hamburger, scroll up to the top, change the range. 010122 tab 123122 tab and run it to refresh it where are those bank feeds located let's go to the first tab to find those because that's where our focus is banking on the left hand side bank feeds up top that's where they are what if you're in the business view though you know like what if i'm in the business view don't worry then they're down in the bookkeeping tab and transactions up top and the bank transactions so you could find them if you're in that view too, no problem. So last time we've been connecting our checking account and then we connected our credit card account. So we've got the bank feeds set up. The next question is, well, what if I have like an intermediary type of account, specifically PayPal? Or PayPal account for any products. Now PayPal is kind of an interesting one because it used to be used as just like a facilitating type of transaction to receive payments and whatnot a lot of times for a lot of businesses that they would then be able to then transfer it into the checking account. But more and more these days, the PayPal account is becoming like another checking account because people are paying expenses and whatnot, business expenses out of the PayPal account. So there's a couple different ways that you can deal with PayPal. One is that you can connect it like in essence a bank now. There's apps for PayPal as well that might give you some more uh, detail in it. We might dive into that maybe in, in future courses, but the, the two options we're thinking about here is one, maybe I don't want to connect the PayPal because it's more complex and maybe I just want to keep my checking account or two, maybe I do want to connect the PayPal as maybe basically another, another checking account. So when might I use, you know, either of those two options. Now note the PayPal transactions, when you transfer from PayPal into the checking account, you will of course see in your account on the checking account, right? So if you had a situation, for example, where all of your money's going through PayPal from like YouTube or something like that, it was YouTube revenue, and you know it's just one source going through PayPal, you're not using PayPal for anything else, you're not using it to pay stuff with, you're just taking the PayPal as a function, as a means of collecting your money from some gig platform. Well, in that case, maybe it, it might not be worth connecting to PayPal because you could just 
get the money from PayPal and then transfer it to your checking account. And although the checking account then will show as a transfer, and I'm not gonna see in the bank detail that this came from whatever it came from, like YouTube revenue, I know that I use PayPal only to collect my money from YouTube revenue or whatever, Amazon or whatever platform that I'm using. And that could work quite well if that's like your only source of income. However, if you've got multiple sources of income, like multiple people or platforms or whatever are paying you through PayPal, then if you wait till you transfer it over to your account and record it as revenue, it'll be more difficult to distinguish the different income sources. So you're not gonna be able to make a different kind of income account over here. If all of my income sources here went through PayPal, then I couldn't really say, well, this is from Amazon versus Audible versus uh, YouTube or website or YouTube, because it would all be kind of uh, b mashed together when I transferred over and it would show up as just one transfer. So that might be okay. You might say, I don't care. It's just my revenue account. I'm just going to call it revenue, whatever. That's easy. So you could do that, but then you'll lose a little bit of, a, of a added detailed information, which might be worth the added uh, problem or issue of connecting to PayPal, which is a little bit more work, but gives you a little bit more of that detail. And then what will certainly most likely cause people to need to actually connect to PayPal is if you're holding on to money in PayPal, so that you can pay off your expenses out of PayPal because that's easy to do. It's becoming easier and easier to pay things through PayPal, which means PayPal is now being kind of like a, a checking account because it's not just a means to collect your revenue anymore. It's now used as a basically a, a, a receipt and payment kind of thing. So that means that what I'd really like is to have it in here as another bank feed so I can see my expenses or the payments that I'm making as well as the revenue, be able to distinguish the revenue and be able to recategorize the expenses in the same fashion as we've done with the checking account and the credit card account. Now there's also other kind of intermediary platforms you might use like a Stripe or something like that. But some of the other ones aren't the same as PayPal in that they stick to just really kind of the transfers of money as opposed to you might not be paying your expenses with them so if you if you get paid through stripe or something it's likely that the stripe is just collecting your revenue and again you, you're faced with the same situation you're like well i could just record all my stripe income as it comes in as just income from whatever source i know it came from say a website for example so you got you got paid through a website for things you're selling on your website Maybe that's good enough for your information to record your income and your deposits when they come through to your checking account. But you might want the added information that's collected from Stripe, such as all the customers that bought stuff from your platform. And again, you really want to think about that to say, do I really want all that information or not? Because you, because if you pull in, you could look at applications that pull in all the people that paid you the other information from like a Stripe, for example, but if you sell a whole lot of volume of small dollar amount things, you might, and, and they're only one-time sales, you might not want all that information other than their email address for your mailing list, right? I, don't, I might not want in my QuickBooks account thousands of customers. Customers. For, that are one-time customers. You know, I just want the mailing list, <laughs> right? So in that case, so you really want to think about, do I really want to go through these other apps and pull all that information into QuickBooks? Or is that just going to load down QuickBooks and not give me any more added value? So with regards to PayPal, I would think that if you have multiple income sources and you're paying out of PayPal using it as a checking account, then linking to it like a bank feed might be a worthwhile activity. And then we're faced with the same kind of questions. Well, how do we link to it? There's two ways we can do it. We can link directly to uh, PayPal with, with an online link, or we can download the, the information from a PayPal. However, PayPal doesn't have as many sources to download. So for example, if I was to hit the drop down and say that I want to upload from uh, notice we have all these different file types. We've got the .csv, we've got the .qfx, the .qbo. This one, the qbo, is the one that usually, if you're going to upload the information from from like a, a checking account or a financial institution, that you would use. Most financial institutions have that. 
but I don't think QuickBook or PayPal does yet. PayPal does have the .csv file, I believe, that you can download. But even that is going to be clogged up with a bunch of garbage in it. We'll take a look at it in a little bit more detail in a second. So you'd have to delete a, a bunch of stuff to do that. So what you would really like to do is get a direct connection most of the time to the PayPal. That would be the easiest thing to do. But again, if you're going way far back in history, you might not be able to go far as far back, for example, with the first connection to PayPal. So if you're trying to reconstruct like a whole year or multiple years, it might you might have to basically download the .csv file and then connect to the bank. So if you're connecting directly to PayPal, and you can go you could go to the uh, to the link account right here, which if, if this was the first time you're linking to it, that page might look different. But most people would have already linked their checking accounts, and then they would go into the link PayPal. And you see down here they've got connect to PayPal. So you can connect to PayPal and then you can go through the setup process to verify your account. You might have to log into PayPal to connect it. But the setup process, like with the checking accounts and credit card accounts, is usually fairly easy. That's kind of like the easy part. And then you're going to be overwhelmed with all that information that comes in from bank feed limbo that we've talked about before with the checking account and the other and the credit card account. So for our practice problem, I'm going to pretend that we downloaded this information from uh, PayPal and upload it. Once we upload the information, whether we upload or whether we connect to the bank will be in the same spot in, in essence, bank feed limbo. So this is a .csv file. And so you can see I have, I've, I've actually trimmed it down already to the three fields. So I believe if you download directly from PayPal, you can download as an Excel file, which might be the easiest thing to do because you're going to have to trim down all the data in the file. And in the Excel file, you'll have all of these uh, other fields that that PayPal gives you that you don't need. And then you can just select all the fields that you don't need and highlight them, right click on them and delete them so that you're down to only the fields you do need which are the standard fields to upload, which is a, a, uh, a name, a date field, a description field, which often includes like the name of the person that's paying you or that you are paying, but uh, in like the bank detail, the jargon. And then there's gonna be a number field or two number fields. If you're using one number field, positive numbers are increases, negative numbers are decreases to the PayPal account. I believe that's how the PayPal data is uh, spit out on the Excel file. Once you've formatted the Excel file, then you can save it as a CSV because you can't upload an Excel file. You can upload a .csv if you have an Excel file. And if you wanna make your own Excel file just to practice with, you can practice with it. You can just type this into Excel, something like this. And then you can say file, save as, and then browse. And then I'm going to save it as not an Excel worksheet, but a .csv file. So something like this, or I think I used the, there's another .csv, it's a .csv file. That's the point. This one is the one I used, I believe. So that's what you want to save it as. And then when you open it, it'll look like it'll open with an Excel file, but it'll be a, a CSV file, which is a compatible file to upload. It's like a like it'll open like an Excel file with all the formatting stuff in it. So there's my file. I'm going to upload that then uh, to QuickBooks as another account, and then we'll be in the same kind of situation as if we connected. And so I'm going to say, OK, let's go drop down. Let's go uh, upload file upload file and I'm going to just select it from the desktop. It's on the top of my desk where it's nice and easy to find, but you got so much junk over there. How can you find anything on top of that desk? Bank feed, PayPal, PayPal, pay up pal. All right. So there we have it. We're going to say boom next. And then uh, an account. So I don't have an account set up yet. So I'm just going to create an account as we go on the fly. We're flying right on that little flies back. We're going to do it on the flies back, which is hard because you have to have good eyes because flies are small. So we're going to do it right on the fly. This would be checking account. 
and then I'm gonna call this PayPal. PayPal, and then a sub account. I think I made a cash parent account. So it's a sub account of the cash parent account. And when do you want to start? Uh, I, I'm gonna say other, and I, I believe the data started sometime last year. So I'm just gonna say August. Obviously this would be quite important if you're linking to the bank banks so that you pull in the proper date i think let me just make sure what happened here other i'm gonna say let's make it just one month prior to that just to be super sure uh what your account balance so it might make that beginning account balance when i record it i'm gonna deal with that later so i'm not gonna worry too much about the beginning balance i'm gonna deal with that that's my beginning balance bank reconciliation kind of situation we've talked about in the past I'm gonna save it and close it. And it looks muy B to the end. So let's uh, uh, let's continue. And so select yes, the format. So uh, is the first row of your file a header? Is the first row a header? I don't think it is, right? Because it wasn't a header. I didn't have any headers. So how many columns, uh, sh how many columns show? So, how many amounts so we only have one column that shows amounts instead of increases being one and then decreases in the other and then what's the date format used used i think i'm using month day and year like that and then the date field is going to be column one where it has the date uh, up top so i'll say yeah the description is going to be that one column two with the teachable and i'm just mapping out and column three is of course the amount so if i had a header field then of course i can tie out to the header but i didn't have a header i just had this straight raw data raw data just like i like my clams or something i don't i don't know or what are lops oysters oysters raw eat them raw I don't really eat oysters. I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna, so I have all of those. That looks good. I'm gonna pull them in. It didn't like these two. What was the problem? What is the problem, man, with those two? It didn't like the increases. I think I have to have something in there on the description. That's why. So I'm gonna say, let's remove, let's close this out. I'm gonna say, no, no. You guys have rejected my data. I am not saying. I'm going to go back to PayPal and uh, I, that's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. I'm just going to add like a description on these. I think that's the problem. I'm just going to say this is a D for deposit and that should do it. So let's close it, save it and let's do it. Oh man, let's save it as a number two. And so there's PayPal number two that I have made the adjustment on. All right, you better recognize, you better recognize now those deposits are important. Those are like the main thing. That's what I'm doing this for, QuickBooks. All right. Upload from a file and then I'll connect this thing. This is gonna be PayPal number two. Boom, let's do it again. Let's do it again. I'm not, it's not a problem. I'm not upset or anything. Just cause QuickBooks is being stupid is the is the first row of your file a header no it's not column one column and then down here it looks like that okay just like last time it's the same thing date all right and then description is that and then the amount okay okay quickbooks are you happy now so there that was the issue i have solved it all right let's go and continue QuickBooks will import 15 transactions using fields you choose. Do you want to import? Yeah, I do. Let's do it. So import completed, boom. And now we've got another item in bank feed limbo. It did not put a beginning balance. So we could do the same reconciliations with PayPal. PayPal, you might, when you first look at it, you're like, it's not the same as a checking account. It's kind of weird, but it does give you reports because you kind of look at a PayPal just like a lot of people look at their checking accounts and they say, 
well, this data in the checking account, I can see it real time, so I don't need a bank statement. But you still want to have the bank statements because the bank statements have that very delineated cutoff helping you to do the, the bank reconciliations. So you still want to do the bank reconciliations like with the PayPal, which, however, should be easy once again because we're probably going to be now, after we get that first bank reconciliation done, we have that beginning balance issue. It should be just like kind of, kind of like the credit cards where we're going to basically do everything from PayPal. You know, we're not, we're not going to enter the data on our side and then verify it to PayPal as we might do with some items in the checking account, like deposits, like checks, physical checks that we write. With PayPal, all transactions were probably going to be electronic and therefore we're going to depend on PayPal to record them in our system and therefore the bank reconciliation should be easy. But now we've got this information in bank feed limbo now, which is what I would call it. It hasn't been pulled into the promised land to help us to create the financial statements or double check the financial statements that we have created. It's over here at this point in time. And of course, one of the major components are going to be these transfers that we have uh, from PayPal that are that are also going to be on our checking account, hopefully deposits into our checking account. So we've got those intercompany kind of or inter bank feed to bank feed type of transactions in a similar fashion as we did when we looked at the credit cards. So in future presentations, we'll just uh, populate and add this PayPal information into the system. It should be, you know, routine, same kind of thing, except for a lot of small businesses, the PayPal might be more, more the revenue side of things because you might be simply, I mean, a lot of people, at least I started using PayPal as a means to collect revenue on these online platforms right it was one of those means to do that uh so you might have more unlike the checking account you're probably going to have more decreases to the checking account expenses on the paypal you might have different categorizations of the revenue and then you've got of course that pairing kind of thing so that's what we'll do in future presentations it will be great you will not want to miss it and so tune in next time and we'll see you then